This is how we make the moonshine. Definitely not in Virginia. I've been a lot of places, I've never seen anything like it. I see agave plants surrounding windows and stuff, so there's gotta be some tequila around here. Well, I came to Mexico to learn as much history as I can about tequila and how it was made. This place is called tequila. Think about it, if it was moonshine, it'd be moonshine Virginia, right? It's educational, but it's also, you know, for my business side. Maybe I want to make moonshine in Mexico. Uh, maybe I want to bring tequila back to the United States in some fashion. This is it. I'm always looking for opportunities. Hola. That's home, my friend. How Welcome are you? home. Please yeah. enjoy us. All right, I'll come in. Your house, man. <laughs> I'm meeting up with Jaime Orendine. I got connected with him through one of my distributors. Glad to Welcome be here. Welcome to our family house. This house belongs to us for more than 100 years. He grew up in tequila. He knows all about the region. I mean, this is where tequila came from. This is our central patio. This family. is different. This is different from yes. me. And that's the house. But now yes. we're outside again. <laughs> <laughs> tequila, this is my, my town. Yeah. I have a lot of members here. Uh, okay. You know, when I was a kid, with mm -hmm. my grandfather and my mm -hmm. grandmother. Now, I, I see it's called tequila. Is that where tequila is here? Yes. The name came for the, the city and then the, the liquid. You know, the, the reason the most important uh, distilleries are in tequila is because we have a very good water. You uh -huh. know, the tequila mountain used to be a volcano. Mm -hmm. And the water that we have here came on the ground. You know, mm -hmm. very good water, very high quality water. It's kind of like moonshining. Oh. We got to have that good water. You know, we're always looking for the right spot. We need uh, the best water. That's uh -huh. the reason we are uh -huh. here. Yes. But directly in my family, since 1924, we start making tequila with uh, our family name. Let me show you, please. Okay. This is uh, Don Eduardo, my grandfather, mm -hmm. and Mercedes, my grandmother. So your grandfather, he was the beginning of this business. Yes, and he was my teacher. Uh, he told me, you want to be in this business, you have to learn every single step. Everything. You know? I'm the third generation, uh -huh. and I have four kids. And they know how to produce tequila, mm -hmm. because I teach them. Everything you know? just like your father taught you. Yes, we have tequila in our blood. Yeah. Jaime and I, we have a whole lot in common. He's a third generation distiller, just like I am. So we should we get on the sidewalk or just walk down the road? It's our town, man. Remember? Yeah, I guess I am walking with Mr. Tequila. <laughs> in Mexico, mm -hmm. you can make tequila, but mm -hmm. only in okay. five states. In Jalisco, uh -huh. Uh -huh. there is Michoacán, mm -hmm. there is Nayarit, there is Guanajuato, and Tamaulipas. But we are here in tequila, mm -hmm. the heart of the production of the tequila. Hey, I've come a long way to see every step in the process of making tequila. I'm really excited to get in this distillery and see how they make this stuff. This is El Llano Distillery. Since 1900, it belongs to my family. Uh -huh. There are different techniques in distilling around the world. So if I can learn even a simple technique, maybe I can use that to better myself as a distiller. Maybe I can bring that back home and I can enhance my technique and maybe I can make something special. We dump the agave here in the patio and we put it in the oven. This is the break oven, and we cook with the steam. You know, he's got a 40-ton oven that used to steam the agave. The stone over there, you see it? That's yeah. a volcano stone. We take that rocks and we put it there. Is that it's really strong? Strong, and they have a temperature control. How long does this take? 40 hours. OK. So it's cool. Squeeze the agave and take the juice out from here. I see. So we got the juice. Yeah. We send it to these tanks, and we add the juice. Six days fermentation, natural six fermentation, days. six days, open fermentation. Uh-huh. I do open fermentation. Yeah, too. me too. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. Uh, you know, you have a lot of flavors and yeah. you know for the air yeah, and everything. It is. It's because of where it's made at, yes. that, it, it exactly. goes into the flavor. There are a lot of similarities in making moonshine and making tequila. We make moonshine in different parts of the country, the United States, and that region actually gives the taste profile to that product. Fermentation is ready. Mm -hmm. We send it to the distillation area. We have a double distillation. We have a puff steel. Oh, look at that. In the first distillation, we get the Ordinario. We have a lot of oil. Oh, OK. In the second distillation, we use the Ordinario. We heat it, we evaporate the alcohol, and then we get the tequila, 50.5% alcohol. But okay. we cut heads and tails. We get the heart of the distillation, the real flavor of the agave. Just like moonshine. Yes. But there is a, a couple of different types of tequila. OK. It's a Blanco. Reposado, añejo, extra añejo. To be reposado, at least have to be two months in wood. For añejo, have to be in a barrel, All right. at least one year. And for extra añejo, no less than three years. 
So you got a categories. Yes, we have the categories. Into it. Let me show you the warehouse, and I have yeah. a surprise for you. You got a surprise? Right. Yes. The more time I spend with Hami, the more I respect him, and the more I like him, actually. The kill is in his blood, like moonshine is in my blood. Hey, I know when I find someone who is a real deal, and Hami is a real deal. This is a very special place. You know, we're aging our tequila in um, this area. I'm in this section, we have the new batch of the barrels, okay. and in this section, we have the very old barrels. All the barrels that we use came from Kentucky. We okay. buy it, I use barrels for bourbon, and we okay. bring it to here. But today, we want to do a very special thing. We're going to open this barrel. Okay. It's a very old barrel that we use. have more than 25 years. This 25 is the last, years the last batch that we're going to use in this barrel. It's going to be today. We're going to check the proof, and we're going to taste. Hey, I'm excited. You know, Hammy's telling me we're going to pull out a sample of it. We're going to check the proof of it and actually taste it. And then we're going to take the tequila. Now, please. OK, I'm doing the same thing. Oops. Yeah, I lost $100 worth, didn't I? I'm going to have to work a day to get back. <laughs> How many takes the, the sample of tequila? And we're checking the proof of it. And now we're going to check the density and the temperature. OK. And then we're going to match in this book to see how many proof that we have in the tequila. OK. This is the density that we use. And the temperature mm -hmm. put inside. 53. And yeah. then temperature. 24. 24. 53 mm -hmm. and, and 24 temperature. 51.5% alcohol. 103 proof then. Yeah, 103 proof. Yes. That's the temperature conversion. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. This chart that we're using explains what you need to do. It's a little high, and before we're bottling, mm -hmm. we have to add water. Okay. Whether you need to raise the proof or lower the proof to get the correct number. And you feel the aromas from mm -hmm. the wood? You have yeah. vanilla. I'm getting that, that bourbon smell. Yeah. It came from the barrel. It smells really good. Yes. It tastes better. I've been waiting all day for this. And I'm very proud to drink tequila with you, Tim. I'm proud to be here. It's an honor. Drinking tequila in it's tequila. tequila. It don't get no better than that. The first agave that I planted was here in this area. This land belongs to our family from more than 70 years, maybe. My whole reason I'm here, I want to know how do you make tequila? You know, where does it come from? All the agave that we have here is a blue agave. Okay. That's the right agave that, to make tequila. Uh -huh. I don't know how far it goes or how many acres, but uh, as far as I can see, all the way to the mountain. All I see is agave. When, when you plant this, they this big? Yes, like this big. Yeah, these ones, we actually planted them on May last year. Yeah, so it's only one year and a half. And you know, this is a young agave. We have to wait almost seven, eight years. That's a long time. It is. In my world, we grow corn and barley and weed, and we distill it, but it's a one-year thing. There's a lot of work involved here. Do you have to buy it from somewhere? We, we take care of the, of the small agaves, the baby agaves, the seeds, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we replant it. You see the small baby agaves over I there? I see it coming up. You know, it's each, like a sprout. Yes, each, each agave gives us like a two or five different baby agaves. Some of these plants are, are producing little plants. When they get big enough, they pull this from the mother plant and transplant those to make more bigger plants. But, but how, how do you plant the whole field though, at the same time? You know, I'm thinking, did they plant it with a machine? Uh, one by one, by one hand. By one, by my hand, I contract guys. So they're gonna plant it, and they're gonna watch over it every year until they harvest it. And then they had to come and chop it, and then take it to the distillery. Remember, when you have a glass of the tequila in your hand, Seven years ago, there is a lot of people around Plan, here planted the gas. 